Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, if you've seen my last game, whew, uh, you'll know that I played poorly. I did manage to win because my opponent blundered. But the last game uh, reminded me of Jakob Agard's books and he says in his uh, Grandmaster preparation uh, positional play, maybe even strategic play, his method of uh, solving complicated positions which aren't tactical and uh, in the two games before this one I blundered because I didn't understand at all what was going on in the position and his three three questions are uh, what is the worst placed piece or pieces uh, where are the weaknesses and what does my opponent want to do and those three questions really help you uh, well by brute force actually to figure out what's going on and had I asked myself the three questions I wouldn't have blundered in, in that game uh, I just lost the game in one move because I had two weaknesses my opponent with a simple double attack targeted both of them and uh, one of them was my bishop on f5, which was defended by the pawn on e6, but if he takes on f5, I undefend d5. And the other one was my knight on a6. So he played knight d4, attacking my c6 pawn, which of course, if knight c6, then b c6, and the knight on a6 is, is undefended. So it was a pretty simple double attack, and I didn't even consider that move. So I would like to use this opportunity to sort of tell you to read Jakob Agard's books, uh, even though the the positions in the books are quite hard, okay, we have a game, uh, they are going to be very useful. Uh, and especially because uh, his, his method of finding what's important in the position is, really does work. Okay, uh, we have a Karakan. I'm always happy to play a Karakan. Uh, it's about 35 degrees, so my laptop is not, uh, well, it's it's overheating as you can hear, but it's not dying yet. Yesterday it actually uh, turned off. Okay, uh, what do I want to do against the fantasy? Recently I've been playing something different to what I normally do, and I plan to play that in my tournament games, so I'm going to play e6 here. I think... Yeah, I'll just play e6. This is what I used to play. I don't play it anymore in tournament games, uh, but for a training game, it's going to be okay. It's actually a, it's actually an interesting move. I think it's the most solid of all the options. Uh, taking and d5 is, of course, most aggressive, leads to sharp positions. But this. This has some strategic implications, which if if you're not familiar with them, you could end up being worse. One of common ideas is to, to play your bishop out to a6, so b6, bishop a6, to make sure you can uh, you can get the bishop outside of the pawn chain. Uh, okay, bishop to b4 is normal. And I have several tournament games, actually, where my opponents played uh, bishop to d2. And they ended up going for the line with takes, bishop takes, and takes on e4 and queen h5. Knight e2 is a more solid approach. But then again, why... Uh, okay. I'm just going to play b6 uh, and play a normal position. I think... I could also go knight e7 first. So if I take and he takes and I play check, he goes knight g3. Defending. So if I go b6, he goes a3. Mm. 
b6 a3 what do i do i haven't looked at this in a long time i'm not sure what to do against a3 i'm not sure if i'm supposed to take or not i think i am supposed to take but The problem is that after b6 I don't have bishop a5. The normal move here is bishop f4 instead of knight e2. Is there a way to punish knight e2? I don't think there is. Unless I can take take and, get, and go knight f6. So d4, f4, knight f6. What can he do? If he goes knight g3, I can go queen h4. I'm not sure if I should be playing a developing move here or go for knight f6. So d4, f4, knight f6. What can he do? Queen d3 maybe. Yeah, queen d3 seems sensible. <clears throat> I'm wasting too much time again. But I think I'm going to go for that. I'm going to take and, and then play knight f6. I'm not familiar, too familiar with the position, I have to be honest. I think against knight f6 he has to go queen d3. Do I throw in queen h4 first? I'm not sure. So takes queen h4, has to play knight g3. Wow, wow, okay. Why would he play f4? Maybe he knows something I don't. Maybe he knows that he blundered. Maybe he knows that queen h4 is good or something. So now I'm just going to play knight f6 and develop sensibly. I think I have a very good position now. In fact, if he plays a3, I think I just retreat my bishop. Maybe even queen a5. Huh. No, queen a5, he has bishop d2. So I don't want to take. The question is where do I put my bishop? And I need to be able to meet knight g3 with bishop b6. So I'm thinking bishop a5 is good. Still keeping the pin, and then if b4, bishop b6, if knight g3, I don't take. Well, if knight g3, the pawn is actually still defended, but he's threatening b4. b4 immediately. Okay, bishop b6 was what I'd intended. No, he doesn't have knight g3 because I play queen d4. Now he will have knight g3. But I think I could get away with knight d5. Because his bishop is not defended. 
So knight d5, if he takes, I repair my pawn structure. If he moves the bishop away, uh, on to d2 or to c1, I can take on c3 and take on d4. So he has to play bishop f2, I think. And then if I go f5, he has queen h5 check in some positions, but not yet. Okay, I'm gonna go knight d5. I like knight d5. Followed by f5. That's probably risky, but since his queen cannot go to h5 yet, I think it's okay to keep my extra pawn. His 13 minutes, I have 10. I'm down on the clock again. Wow, okay, he's giving his bishop away. I think I'm just gonna take that. I don't really want to play f5 if I don't have to. He wants to castle queenside, I think. So do I take this bishop or not? My knight is a pretty good piece. I have ideas of a5, but I feel like I should play f5 first. I'm gonna play f5. Because now he, he doesn't have... his queen is not on the diagonal, so I'm not really worried about my light squares. Maybe I should have taken this bishop, but I feel that my knight is a better piece sitting on d5. Because his pawns are on dark squares, I think this knight is better than this bishop. Well, it definitely is, but the question is, is it going to stay better? Okay. He wants to play c4 and chase me away. And then he wants to play knight c5, which I don't want to allow. So I'm just going to go knight d7. So if he takes, I take with the knight, preventing c4. And if he goes c4 on knight d7, I take on e3, queen e3. And that should be okay. So I'm going to go knight d7, developing a piece. I don't think I had anything with queen h4 there. Okay, so now I have to take. So takes. Queen takes. Do I have any tricks with e5? Because the pawn is pinned. No, he has c5. Okay. I need to keep my knight on d7. Because after knight c5... I think I want to be able to take with the knight. But then what do I do about my bishop? Maybe knight f6 is good straight away. How scary is his attack if he plays g4? If I castle, he goes g4. So I feel I should prevent that. So I am going to go knight f6. And if he plays knight c5, I take with the bishop. The thing that worries me more is c5 and knight b2, knight c4 coming in here. That, I think, is a very good strategic plan. It does give up the d5 square. So there's a weakness to c5 now. But if he can ever get a knight into d6 and I cannot take it, then that's... A monstrous knight. Okay, he, he wants to play g4. Okay. 
Or he was just preventing knight g4, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna have to get my bishop to the other side via e8 probably. So I'm thinking bishop d7 is a useful move. And once I castle, I have bishop e8. I don't want to play bishop c7, not if I don't have to. Castle's queenside, okay. He cannot play d5. He could go g4. So I may prevent that now with h5. I really don't want him to play g4 now because that undermines my pawn on e4. So okay, I'm gonna go h5. I don't want to allow g4. So now of course I take with the with the h pawn. He doesn't have d5, that's his main pawn break. And I want to go a5 next. Which is why my bishop on d7 is even more useful. I'm thinking I'm gonna leave my king in the center because it's really not safe anywhere on the board. He's reinforcing d5 which makes sense so i should get my queen away from the from the d file he still cannot play it because his queen is on on e3 but queen e7 cannot be a bad move if he takes on b6 can he then play d5 yes he can so maybe i should play a5 okay a5 first if he plays b5 i take he takes i go rook c8 if i could get rid of his c4 pawn that means he never has d5 okay i'm gonna go a5 i like a5 a5 is very aggressive. He cannot play d5 yet. And if I can weaken these pawns, then I'm getting to his king. So he's, I think, pretty much forced to play b5. If he takes on a5, I take with the rook. Weakening d5, because the knight on a4 would be undefended if knight d5. Again, if he does play b5, then I take it. If he takes with the knight, I take again, getting the d5 square. But I think he has to do it. I don't think he can allow me to take and open up the a file. If he plays knight c5, what do I do? I was planning to take it, but now I'm not sure. If knight c5, maybe queen c7 is good. Knight c5, queen c7, defending b7, or maybe even rook a7, but that leaves my rook kind of loose. I have 6 minutes, he has 10, I need to speed up. It's a very complicated position.
Of course, any endgame is great for me. I, I have a protected past pawn on e4, but it's a long way away <clears throat> to any endgame. And also if he takes on a5 and then plays d5, I can take and I'm double attacking the knight. Of course, if the queen moves and all that. If queen g3, I go queen e7. Well, actually not, because my bishop is undefended. So queen g3 could be a good idea. I think I may have to go king f8 there. Queen g3, king f8, because if I go rook g8, he goes queen g3, queen g6 check. Huh. He may be able to go queen g3 and d5. Okay. He doesn't do that, so... I think I'm going to open up the e-file, I don't see why not. The a-file, excuse me. And I think I want to prevent queen g3, so I'm thinking h4. If he goes rook a1, he's threatening knight b6, queen b6, rook a8. Okay, I'm gonna go h4, because I don't want to allow queen g3. And also I would like to do this, if I'm given the opportunity. Okay, he develops the bishop, he didn't go rook a1. So now I should be opening the position up. So I'm thinking bishop c7, if he plays d5, what do I do? The problem is that I cannot control d5 and move my queen at the same time. If I go bishop c7, he goes d5. I take, he takes, take, take, takes with the rook. Well, actually, after bishop c7, he doesn't have d5, because I can take and take the knight. And then he takes on e6 and my queen is attacked, but I can transfer it to b6. Okay, I have to play something, I'm gonna go bishop c7. If knight c5, I'm gonna go b6. I need to be able to move my queen away from the d-file, that's very stressful. Also, if knight c5, I could go queen e7 straight away, because I'm attacking b4. Now I'm also looking at the f4 pawn, not that I want to take it, opening up more, more lines towards my king, but maybe at some point. Okay, he does play knight c5. Do I go queen e7? I could just go queen e7 here, and then b6 threatens the, the b4 pawn. If he takes on d7, I'm really happy about that. because I take on b4 first. So I'm gonna go queen e7. Excuse me. Eight minutes to four. Not good. It looks like my king is going to be on, on f7 if he plays rook a1. I 
if d5 I cannot go b6 because she plays knight d7 I could go b6 now Okay, I'm gonna go b6. I need to chase this knight away. This is my worst piece, so if he wants to take, he's really welcome to take. And if he then plays d5, he's opening up his own king as well. Seven minutes to four. Well, d5 is actually prevented if he takes on d7 because I take with the queen, I have another defender on d5. Okay, I got rid of my bad bishop, that's good. Okay. Do I go king f7 or king e7? King e7 is weak to knight d5 threats. But it's closer to my bishop. And king f7 is weak on the diagonal if I ever move my knight and my rook. So I think I'm gonna go king e7. Obviously if he takes, takes and then plays d5 and I take, he has bishop h5 check. I don't know. I don't know what this position is like. I know that I can threaten the f4 pawn with queen d6. Again, I'm not sure I want to do that. I would love him to to move his c pawn. If he plays c4, c5, I'm probably strategically winning. So I'm looking at b5 to provoke. C takes b5. I don't think it's good enough though. I'm happy that I got rid of my light square bishop actually. Aha, he wants to take on a8 and take on h5, on h4. In that case, I'm gonna take on d4, so I'm not too concerned. Still, what do I do? <coughs> it's very hard to find moves. I'm looking at queen d6 just to target his weak points, highlight some weaknesses. Because I, 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 in this position, I may take on, on f4 instead of d4 to make sure my queen can defend on g7. So takes, takes, queen h4, queen f4. If queen h7, for example, then queen h6. <coughs> Excuse me. And if he now plays rook f1, I can take on a on a1 and then take. So he's probably forced to take on a8.
<coughs> sorry okay four minutes to five that's better almost equal on time I think he has to take on a8. I mean, what else does he do? Yeah. And I think I take on f4. Okay, he's defending that. So now how can I complicate the position? If I go rook h8, he actually doesn't have rook a1 because I take on f4. So now his queen is tied down. So now his rook is tied down, excuse me. I don't know how he makes progress, but I'm going to do this. I just want to defend my pawn for now. Because if I lose the h4 pawn, then his g pawn moves, and then my e4 pawn is undefended. So I don't want to do that. If I could put more pressure on d4, that would be great. I just don't know how. I wish I had another rook. This is a good move. Because now if I take, he takes with the queen. And then next, I cannot take on, on d4 because he takes on g7. And then if I play king f7, he plays rook g1, which is very scary. So takes, takes, rook h7. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I think I have to take. So now I'm threatening the d4 pawn. And if he moves his rook away, I'm threatening the f4 pawn. But what I would really like to do is get my queen into the action over here. If he goes bishop h5 now, trying to sack a piece, I don't take with the knight. Even though I, I, yeah, I could take with the knight, because on queen g6 I have knight f6. How does he defend both d4 and f4? I don't see how. Also on bishop h5 I can just ignore it. We are going to get into time trouble. Do I have to be worried about queen d4, rook d1? I do because I lose my queen. So I cannot take on d4. Yeah, I actually cannot take on d4. That's a problem. So I'm not threatening queen d4. What do I do? So then I probably go queen d8, trying to get my queen to h8.
If I get my queen to h8, I feel that everything is safe. Yeah, of course, I don't have queen d4 because rook d1. Well, actually, now... Now he vacated the f2 square. But he may have bishop h5. So queen d4, rook d1, queen f2, bishop h5. And threatening stuff on f7. I could take on d4, but it seems very scary. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna go queen d8, uh, because I'm afraid of queen f7 after bishop h5. And also now... Uh, yeah, actually, if he plays bishop h5, I still cannot take it. I'm gonna have to go queen h8 first. The point of queen d8 is to defend the f7 square. And to evict the queen if possible. So if bishop h5, I can go queen e8. And he's forced to trade queens. Okay, I'm gonna go queen e8. Threatening to trade queens. Any queen trade would of course mean that uh, my position is almost winning. Okay, and now I don't have queen h5. So I'm gonna go queen h8 as intended threatening to take here is if rook a7 then king d7 maybe even king d8 no not king d8 king d7 Can I just take on f4? So I'm looking at knight h5. Okay, I'm gonna have to play quickly, I'll play knight h5. He undefended the h5 square. <coughs> of course, my bishop is pinned, so I cannot take yet. Yeah, he just has knight e2. This was a very bad move. After he moves his queen, that is. Wait, what?
I just allowed queen f7. I allowed queen f7. Ah. And my rook is undefended. What do I do? I think I have to go king c8. I think I have to go king c8, I don't see any other moves. If I go king d6, he mates me. This was such a bad move. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go king c8. If queen f7, I go queen d8. Ah, oh, he takes on e6. Ugh. My position is falling apart now. Yeah, I messed it up. Well, actually, against queen f7, I don't have to play queen d8, I can play g5. He takes, or g6, excuse me. g6, takes on e6, king b8. Okay, I, I, I have this resource which I wasn't aware of. I was saved. If rook a8, bishop b8, I don't think I'm hanging anything. Get your rook out of the way. I don't know about this position. This is so messy to play in time trouble. Can I just take on f4? Then he takes on g6. No, I have to play king b7. He, he takes on c6. I have to play king b7. He may just be mating me. Unless I have this. I think I have to play queen c6. Ah, he just takes with the pawn. And has queen e8. So I have to play queen d8 now. Now he takes here. Oh, my position is just crumbling. Yeah, everything is falling apart. Okay, I'm gonna go look H8. Oh my god, everything is falling apart. I just played really poorly. Let's trade off some pieces at least. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, he didn't take, which is good. He could have just taken. This is just insane. I have no idea what I'm doing.
Ja, yeah, okay. How do I save myself? Yeah, there is no saving this position. Okay, I'm gonna have to do something crazy. I don't think I have a perpetual, but I have to try. He has to go to a4, otherwise I, I play bishop e4. Oh, can I take the bishop safely? He is then gonna go king here. And then I don't have any checks. No, I cannot take the bishop. I cannot take the bishop. Oh, he just hung this, okay. Yeah, I mean, this is unfortunate. We are both in time trouble. He just hung everything. This is checkmate after queen a6. Yeah, I mean, time trouble is... It's ugly to play in time trouble. I mean, I'm glad I'm the one who, who blundered He's the one who blundered last, but this was just another game. He just destroyed me at one point. Okay, let, let's have a look at the game. Uh, let me expand this. Uh, okay, I'm actually very interested in the theory here. He played four blunders, I played three blunders, Jesus. Okay, e6, knight c3, bishop b4. Yeah, bishop f4 is the main move. Now knight e2, d4, yeah, uh, I was thinking f4 and knight f6. Why is this not playable? Let's see. Because of a3. This isn't too bad. No one plays it, but it isn't too bad. After f4, it's minus 3. Okay, and we are out of book. So, knight f6, blunder. I need to play f5 first. Okay. I thought knight f6 was okay. Knight d5, good. Yeah, I should have taken on e3. But I played f5 here. a5 is thematic. I didn't do it yet. Okay. h5, not good. I should have played a5 straight away. I mean, I was looking at a5. So, so now I finally did play it. Take stakes. h4 is good. Bishop c7, knight c5, queen e7, everything is good. b6 takes, takes. I'm still winning according to the engine, but this was hard. Castles. Who would castle here? That's insane. Queen d6 best, good. Takes, takes. King f8. Wow. Why would I play king f8? I didn't think of king f8 at all. Takes, takes. g5. Okay, let's look at the line with g5. I really don't understand this. 
if he takes with the pawn ah oh, okay if he takes with the queen and then what and then i take on d4 and i'm not concerned about anything because i'm controlling g1 yeah this is a hard move to find for me queen d8 mistake king f8 was good b5 was good b5 as i said i was looking at it at several points to weaken the d5 square but i couldn't make it work okay here queen h8 is bad i should have played queen b8 preventing rook a7 now i just have to go back wow yeah after king d7 he's he's better i just need to chase the rook away and once the rook moves away somewhere ah then i take on f4 Oh, I didn't see that. It's a double attack. King d7, bishop f1. <laughs> Plus 7. Yeah, I, I completely missed queen g6 in this position. Mate in 7. It's mate in 7. Here, here, here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Queen f7, g6 takes, takes. The rook moves. Queen c6 was also good here. And it's much better than in the previous position. Yeah, queen e8. Wow, yeah, he just should have played. He should have played queen g8. Because then I don't have queen d8. Ah, okay, queen e8 here, here, here. Plus 12. How the hell did I get away from this? How did I, how did I, okay, rook h3 takes here, yeah, he should have played just queen c3, mate in 8, okay, I mean, this, doing analysis with 20 seconds, in a game where you had 20 seconds on the clock is just, makes no sense, Th this was, so where did they mess up Let, let's go back so in this position i'm completely winning and after king d7 white is slightly better but if against rook a7 i just go queen b8 which i didn't see okay, where can i see how much time i had on the clock why doesn't it say how much time i how much time i had okay i don't know yeah, and this is just over, because he moves the rook back and they take. Yeah, okay, I should have done that. Okay, uh, thank you for watching, this was wild. Uh, I hope you liked the game, I did. Uh, stay tuned for more chess, see you tomorrow, bye-bye.